G'day Hammerheads, today we're going to be looking at the new Milwaukee M12 high output or HO battery and boy I'm going to be struggling not to make hoe jokes today. And we're just going to be comparing to the standard 4 amp hour battery there so it's time for a hoe down. And joining us today is my lovely assistant here, the M12 CH. Okay, so on the outside there is not much of a difference other than the new hoe has this uh, sort of matte black finish, which is nice. Um, otherwise they look very, very similar. So the weight is 407 grams versus 422. So the hoe is a little bit heavier. The hoe, the hoe seems to be a little bit more ruggedized. It's actually got a slightly smaller footprint as well. Don't know how well you can see that. Corners are nicely chamfered off uh, and the stack on the foot here is slightly thinner. Uh, the terminals are all the same and you'll note that the post here looks like it still just contains the exact same style of cells, 18650s. And that's unlike the M18 range which has 18650s in the standards and 21700s in the hose. And that's a good example of why most toolmakers have moved away from this post style battery. I'm not sure why Milwaukee kept it. I guess they just thought, you know, releasing a whole new range is going to be too much work, but uh, it really does limit you in terms of what you can do. So, so this tool is lucky enough to not suffer from this going into the handle and having a bigger, fatter handle than you want, but it is still limiting the range because this is the tool interface built around the battery there. So yeah, I think it's just Bosch and Milwaukee that does that now and I wouldn't be surprised if they if they move on at some point. Uh, and you'll also note that we don't have any XC batteries in this country. That seems to be just a North American thing, you know. Extended capacity, I mean, the number's bigger, so yeah, it's got more capacity. I don't, I don't know why they bother doing that, but anyway, they don't do it here, so that's just your standard battery. So in terms of price, this is just from one of our local tool dealers, which usually has solid market pricing. Uh, 138 for the hoe versus 128 for the four-point hoe, or 148 for the standard in six-point hoe. So with this kind of pricing, you're really better off just bringing the 10 bucks extra for, for the six-point hoe, unless the high output really does uh, put out more. So Milwaukee reckons the hoe runs 25% cooler, gives you 25% more power, mm, and 25% more runtime, which is, um, I guess you call that arithmetic? Uh, it's just, you know, five is 25% bigger than four. Anyway, I guess we'll see. All right, so let's get drilling. As usual, the first test for the tiny hammers is uh, eight mil by 80 in 32 MPA concrete. Let's see how they go. Alrighty, for the 8mm speed drill, we had the hoe coming in with 15.73 uh, seconds averaging, which is about 7% faster than what the uh, standard battery did, 16.92. So not a huge improvement, but that has actually brought her in front of the, uh, the M18 drill there. So yeah, not a huge difference there. Um, believe it or not, the 8mm, the smaller bits really do seem to tax the motor. Uh, on these on these little hammers a fair bit because basically they go in really tight There's not much of a kerf on those drill bits very little room down the sides there So it does go in nice and tight. So yeah, I was actually expecting the hoe to actually, you know, put out a little bit better there But uh, anyway, let's move on and our next test is 12 millimeters same concrete same depth. Let's see how they go Okay, for our 12 mil speed drill, we had the hoe at 17.48 seconds, coming in actually in front of the uh, 12 volt to watt. So there you go, some improvement there. And that's about 8% faster than the standard battery, which was 19.07. 
Yeah, so when you're drilling with a rotary hammer, they tend not to really bog down too much, you know. Um, high output batteries are going to be giving the motor more current and it's only really going to need it when it's really working hard, you know, really biting into the material. So unless you're hammering really deep into that hole and that hole is just getting all completely filled up from all the hammering, you know, like... It the, the, the motor's just not really going to struggle that much. Why don't we just get that motor under load, see if we can get the hoe to put out a little bit better. So I've got a 16 mil spade bit. I went and grabbed three inches of wood and, you know, I'm told that's more than enough to get the job done. Uh, and then went drilling. So let's see how we go. And drilling through our wood, we actually ended up with the hoe a little bit faster again than the standard 17.85 seconds versus 18.51. Now, the uh, the vision was actually showing the exact same time for those, but that's their median run. So this is an average of three. So averaged up about three and a half percent faster for the hoe. So, you know, after all that testing, we're not seeing a huge difference. So um, I decided to go ahead and do the runtime test. So this is the standard granite runtime test I've done with a lot of hammers already, including this guy with the four point hoe. So we've got one of these bits on there. We're drilling 12 by 70 mil in. Let's go see that rock hard action. Okay, so the M12 with the hoe on there, so it's this section here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, sixteen, and a half. Sixteen and a half. Not too shabby. All right, so after drilling for as long as she possibly could, the hoe got 16 and a half holes. So that's actually 22% more than the standard battery, which had 13 and a half. So I reckon the hoe lasts about 25% longer and, you know, 22.22% air yeah, close enough. Yeah, it's a little bit of a shame there that this is just adding up to really just an improvement in, in amp hour capacity, you know. And let's see if there's any difference in drilling speed with this test. Alrighty, so in terms of speed, the hoe was a little bit faster than the standard. 41.86 seconds versus 44.21, so that's only about a 5% improvement. And finally, with the runtime test, I do like to do a temperature measurement too, get out the old heat camera at the end of the test. And running the hoe, the drill ended up a fair bit hotter, 61.2 degrees Celsius versus 52 for the four-point hoe battery there. But, you know, the drill was running for a fair bit longer, so yeah, understandable that it's going to heat up more. And if we look at the actual thermal image, you know, the, the hammer drill area, chuck sort of region, that's, that's the hottest. And on the hoe, we ended up with the same pattern, but uh, I did actually measure the battery temperature directly and that crosshair there, 33 degrees. So that is pretty impressive. You know, this battery was fully drained. It worked as hard as it could. And uh, yeah, only got up to 33 degrees. And one thing I did notice during the runtime tests uh, with this guy on there, the Christmas lights were going a lot and uh, the battery did actually seem to be overheating and I had to actually pause that test uh, several times during that test as we saw in that video. So with the hoe, it only did the Christmas lights once.
So it's possible it just wasn't really touching the thermocouple contact in there well enough rather than overheating because as we saw, she stayed nice and cool at the end there. All right, guys, so in the end, how did she actually do? Well, the hoe, yeah, didn't really improve the story all that much. So the biggest performance increase was actually in the 12 mil drilling, 8.33% uh, faster, yeah. Not too bad. The temperature actually had the biggest increase, but that's because, you know, she did more work. And in the runtime itself, 22.22% more holes drilled. It's fine, I guess. Not the biggest improvement at all. So there you go. After all of that, the 5.0 is really just a 5.0 in this tool. Now that's not super surprising, partly because rotary hammers don't, you know, really need the whole high output battery situation because of how they actually work. But also this particular tool is obviously not gonna be optimized to use the high output batteries. No doubt a future generation probably will be. Milwaukee likes doing that after all. Uh, but for now, this is basically just a slightly smaller five amp hour battery you're probably gonna see more of an improvement with the high output stuff using tools that, you know, slow down when they're actually cutting through the material or doing their work. You know, maybe a standard drill driver, uh, probably things like circular saws, band saws, stuff like that, where the motor actually has to work harder as it encounters the material. That's not really the case with rotary hammers in general. So yeah, no doubt Milwaukee will be releasing a new version of this particular tool at some point because this one is, I don't know, almost 10 years old now. Um, so it'll be interesting to see if they do optimize it for the high output batteries there as well. But meanwhile, you know, this guy, nothing to write home about. It's not really gonna improve your rotary hammering game. Um, but uh, you know, it is nice to have a five amp hour battery. I know the data doesn't really suggest much of an improvement, but you know, just between us, I actually like this tool tool a lot better with this battery on there. Do I really notice 8% more drilling? Eh, probably not, but you know, I just, you know, psychologically it did feel a little more powerful in my hands. So anyway, hammerheads, there you go. From the four point hoe, the five point hoe, my little assistant here. Thanks very much for watching and uh, we'll see what Milwaukee comes up with in future. I'm kind of hoping it's a bigger 12 volt rotary hammer. That'd be cool. Scratches later. And joining us today is my lovely assistant, the uh, beautiful little Milwaukee M12CH. What the fuck?